It is February the 6th, 2021. Here's Chris, there's Emer, there's Adrian and Jeremiah, and this is The Future Photography. Hello. Whoop, whoop. Hello. Whoop, whoop. That was good. Hello. <laughs> good morning. Good evening. <laughs> Future photography from the past, because we're recording this before you're here. Every, so. every podcast is in the past. <laughs> That's right. In one way or the other. The future of photography, so figure that out. <laughs> It's, it's all a blur. Weird, <laughs> weird it's timing physics. things. All Are you physics. trying to suggest, Jeremiah, that we're just making this up? <laughs> <laughs> you mean like the Matrix? <laughs> oh no! Could, could could be could be. Let's not it's all made out. up. It's it's all On made up, and the points article. don't matter. Where's that from? Anyway, I'm back with another episode on. Something related to photography, or I would think the topic that Adrian suggested is more related to hmm, videography in general. Yeah, a, definitely. Just, we definitely got a photo component somewhere. We could say it's photography adjacent. It, yes. it definitely is. Working definitely from is. home because of the whole working from yeah. home. So we like our neighbors. And as this subject is a neighbor to photography, we welcome <laughs> it to our community. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Adrian, well, I, um, all yours, Adrian. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, in which off. case, then, <laughs> th thank, thank you <laughs> for uh, granting me this audience. I need some help, really. I mean, I know, yeah, I know we all know that anyway. Um, <laughs> I just need help in general. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, well, but my world, my world right now, as you know, and as I complain about quite a lot on, on this podcast, I spend uh, five days a week, six hours a day on video calls right now. So a big part of my photography life um, is actually not still photography at all, but is, is moving picture type. And, uh, you know, basically how to make myself look good so good on video calls that everybody stops recognizing that I'm talking absolute nonsense. <laughs> That's it's going viral. Dazzling. That's, that's going viral. That's and that's our, career. All, all, all our career. goal. That's our goal. Do you know what, everyone. Jeremiah? That's what passes for my career <laughs> these days. This is <laughs> these these are interesting times. You know. Yeah. yeah don't forget, I've I, I've been a, a management consultant or business consultant or something consultant for twenty plus years at this point. So you know, I, I've made a living out of talking to people and telling them what they're doing wrong and and what they should do to be better, and and sometimes it really is actually that blunt. And now I have to do all of that down a screen. So so there is a genuine question behind all of this, which is how do I protect my career? My question <laughs> is, I, I keep telling people the very same kind of advice that you do, but nobody sends me a check. What am I doing wrong here? Uh, you just have to wait for the royalties to kick in. So I, yeah, you, I. I <laughs> that's all it is anyway now there, there is a question here right and there's the clue of course in the in the title of the show should i buy a teleprompter and a lav mic because i'm thinking right if i'm gonna yeah at the moment i'm getting quite a lot of compliments from my colleagues for the quality of my video setup on calls and then you know occasionally i'll show them the this the, the the still photo of, you know, of my desk with a couple of lights on it and the camera on a mini tripod on the desk and stuff like that and everybody goes ooh and ah but how long before they all catch up? How long before corporates just issue these things as standard? So you, know, you start with the ones that really need to make a really good impression. It'll probably be creative agencies and law firms or something like that. Mm. So I, I, I'm, I'm conscious I need to stay ahead of the game. Right. Have, have any of you discovered what would be uh, called a absolutely uh, top of the line, beautiful, 4k um video conferencing camera that's not a still camera that we adapt but that's something that sits on a screen because i haven't i i've i've seen them in corporate situations they're usually t sold by companies yeah. like cisco you know yes, uh, um, and you you walk into a video suite and and stuff like yeah. that uh, interestingly enough um nobody ever trains their staff so so you end up with you're walking into a video suite that's you know 20 30 40 thousand pounds worth or dollars mm. worth of or euros worth of, of equipment nobody knows how to work it <laughs> always a waste of money well it, it, uh, fair to be fair, it's it's not very trivial to set things up properly in terms of video and audio. I see this every single day, uh, even speaking with people who should be knowing it better, but even they have issues <laughs> sometimes setting up their, their cameras the proper way. 
Well, that's that. That's a line of business for you, isn't it? I mean, you 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 do that. I, I do some consulting in that field. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, so, the, so, so, uh, just for the avoidance of doubt, I, I am asking for some free consultancy, Chris. <laughs> um, I'm here. I'm here for you. Here. But it benefit the listeners as well. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, just a quick recap at the moment. Um, I uh, I have uh, my my main digital camera, which is a Fuji XT3 on a tripod. Um, I have a little HDMI to USB converter, so I can plug it into any laptop or, or any computer and it just appears as a, a normal USB class compliant webcam um, just has a slightly higher quality and what I use my, what lens do you use uh, I have the the absolute greatest go everywhere lens for the Fujis it's the 18 to 55 oh. um, it's it's the it's it is uh, it's the one that comes with a lot of them if you buy the kit but it's, it's absolutely cracking walk around you know middle zoom lens um, and, and and certainly, you know, once it's uh, processed, my face turned it into some pixels and sent it up the wire that is, is you know, as thin as you like. Um, it's certainly way more than good enough. Um, it's uh, so I have that as a setup. Uh, I have a couple of lights just to, to make sure that I can be seen. Uh, I have a, a microphone, what with being a podcaster and all. And I spend my whole day looking downwards at my laptop screen and not at the people that I'm talking to because I'm not looking at the camera. I try, but it's really tricky sometimes just to keep looking at the camera lens uh, and not to get drawn. And I can do it here for those watching right right now. As I speak these words, I'm looking into the camera. So hopefully you three can see my eyes making good contact with you. Mm, and now yes. I will look at my pictures of you on my screen. So I have to dip my head okay, and yeah, I'm dipping good, my yeah. eyes and that's mm. that's a thing, right? That's a that mm. that's a thing. Um is it a good thing? Well no. Does anybody mind in a corporate world at the moment? Mm. Well, no, not really, because everybody has still got mm. you know, the, the webcams that are built into their laptop screens. So pretty much everybody's not looking at their camera. Um, but like I say, I want to stay a step ahead. And there's a thing you can do with a teleprompter because you can have a teleprompter and that then means your camera shoots through it. And what you can have, rather than a, a speech reflected on it, uh, because I tend to ad lib my podcasts and my business meetings, um, instead and of having life. a speech yeah, and life, yeah, and life. <laughs> <laughs> and what you can do is have a monitor and if you think about it just as a, a little a, a secondary monitor and you can use that and you could put your your zoom window or your teams window or your obs browser window or whatever system it is that you use onto that second monitor and then you can actually have projected on that teleprompter the faces of the people that you're talking to and i think that would be a really good way to connect can i draw your attention to the films of Errol Morris. Yeah, I was about to say ones? that. <laughs> oh, okay. I used to know Errol back in the day, um, and and I haven't seen him in a decade or more. Uh, he was a friend of a friend, but but um, he established a technique of interviews very much in the same uh, focus as where you're leading us here, which is. Mm. He wa yeah, he wanted very, very uh, direct communication with subjects who are not really used to uh, speaking into a camera lens, um, but speaking directly to him. Right. So he, he could be in another room or another uh, area adjacent, not directly across from his subject. And yet they would be looking at him directly asking questions. And as he filmed, there's an intimacy and a real directness that is very specific that he has used over the course of decades now uh, to provoke um, more than just the subject and, and uh, influences of his most interesting sub subjects that he interviews. But the directness uh, is very, very specific. And I haven't really seen people... Uh, imitate it. And, it and it gets people to e even non-actors to look into the camera and act as if they are actors they can play especially to the, those especially yeah. those a, a good a good entry entry into the errol morris uh, universe i think is fast cheap and out of control which is a documentary which is kind of sore parts real but uh, pre really amazing how these people 
everyday normal people speak into the camera because they're speaking at Errol Morris in, in, in the teleprompter, actually. Yeah. yeah, in fact, I think we should kind of put this in the show notes, too, yes. for people to explore mm -hmm. him because it has a direct connection to what you're what you're talking about. That's, that's yeah. really interesting. Every day is a learning day, right, with you mm. guys, because I've never heard of Errol Morris before. No, me neither. Oh, you have a treat. In, mm. Totally. Oh, treat. Yes. oh, wow. Okay, mm. cool. Oh, yeah. This is one of the most, I think, important documentarians alive. Uh, and from extremely funny, he did an early uh, film called Pet Cemetery, which is mm -hmm. really is that a Stephen interesting. King novel, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. No, this is a, it's a documentary about oh. a small pet cemetery right. in a small town. He interviews people about oh, wow. how that, you know. But also he goes to the Thin Blue Line where he interviews it, 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 it's about law enforcement, um, certainly. Well, I, I leave it to our listeners, viewers, to explore his work. It's dazzling and technically dazzling for an interviewee. Interesting. Lots of discovery. Interesting. Yeah, mm. I, I'll, I'll have to get that on my to watch list then. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> So, so that so if you guys have got some experience of some of this, I mean, I I I have my own experience just just from yeah you know, the corporate world that I inhabit Monday to Friday, and you know it is it it doesn't cause me any harm that it, or or any negative feelings that that I yeah you know, my colleagues don't seem to look me in the eye, um, uh, but but e equally. It, you know, when somebody does choose to look into the ca straight into the camera, it does strengthen the communication that they're making. Definitely. Mm. And I kind of, yeah, kind of like to have that edge. <laughs> like, I think it could do me some good, you know. <laughs> yeah. There are people who would like to avoid that directness as well. Yeah. So maybe absolutely. they're like intimidated yeah. by it there are yeah. there yeah. are people on this very podcast who are looking into a teleprompter right now that would be me i'm looking straight <laughs> at the camera while i'm looking straight at you guys all That's right you do it so well then. all right so tell me then chris tell me tell me tell me i, I do you know what i should have known this already or i should have been able to guess it over the years um you probably no, told no, me, it's, and I forgot. But it's not a it's not a not a traditional teleprompter. With a traditional teleprompter that you see in the news show, you'd have this contraption around the camera, and then you'd have a, a, a monitor lying on on the on the back and, and projecting mm -hmm. upwards into a semi-transparent mirror. Um, mm -hmm. What I'm doing is I'm I'm using an inverse teleprompter, which is uh, I'm looking at my computer screen through a semi-transparent mirror, and the camera is looking downwards onto that mirror and it reflects right in, into my face. Oh. So the camera is hanging above the screen from a tripod and it's looking down. I have to, I have to flip it upside down because it's, uh, it's, it's the wrong way. Um, but now I'm looking at you guys and I'm looking into my lens at the same time. Wow. Ooh, that's that. That sounds that interesting. This is that this a is big this, piece of glass, is it? You you can't buy. No, that's it's it's plastic. Actually, it's a it's a oh. acrylic. You cannot buy this. I built this. Um, and oh, in okay. The, and oh. in the pics of the week, I will I will give you a link to a video where that is explained. Oh, oh that's oh. really good. Actually. You mean you're not going to yeah. build it for all of us? No, <laughs> not really. And it's <laughs> and it's and it's and it's kind of it's kind of a bit awkward to work with it because it actually covers up some of my screen so I can't see everything and it's a bit of a of I have to navigate around it a bit but um it is I'll 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 give I'll, I'll post a photo of it um yeah I do into, yeah that's, into the that discord really that's a place where that would live in the discord mm. so so that that sounds really interesting because you know desk setups are so personal aren't they because everybody works in a different way right so uh one of the things that I have to contend with is for my my current professional work I have uh well I have two laptops on uh, open and running at any one point in time and often I have to switch the camera connections between them uh, be, you know, and move them around on my desk because I'm either meeting and the meeting is on one system or it's on another system or what have you and that's just it's a feature of my work 
Um, so I don't have a, a monitor on my desk at the moment because I'm moving stuff around all the time. I just use the laptop screens. So my idea was that actually to, to have a, a teleprompter, it almost becomes a, a second screen and I wouldn't use it for you know doing work per se, right? Yeah, you know, if I'm gonna write a document or, or something like that, I wouldn't use that as my monitor. But actually so much of what I do does involve talking to people on video calls. I thought it would be a really good second monitor type approach. Um, but Chris, you're, you, I mean, you, you work with a, a, a big iMac, I think, don't you? So is it covering part of the screen of yes. your, your iMac? Well, but, but it's a semi-transparency, so I see what's going on behind that screen. So that's, that's where, how I can look at you. Um, but still, okay. it's a bit of a contraption. Um, well, everyone who's listening to this, you'll find a link to a picture in the show mm. notes. So uh, that should give you an idea of. MacGyver so if I so if I have again, a, a look, sorry, I spoke over you. No, no, it's the MacGyver approach again. It totally, totally. <laughs> you're you're quite fond of that. Approach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have any of those kind of skills, but I'm sure I can I can follow a video. But um, so so Chris, if I have a look at you right now, uh, uh, yeah, I'll dip my head and I'll look at my monitor screen and won't look at my camera lens, and I will have a look at you right now, and I think to myself, is this a threatening man? Is his communication really piercing me? And I think it's a positive thing. It, it doesn't feel threatening to me the fact that you're you you seem to be looking directly at me. I, I think that's that's I am, actually. I, I'm looking directly at you. I'm not, I don't just seem to. I am looking at you. <laughs> well, you I'm looking at you in the eyes right now. <laughs> From what eight hundred miles away? <laughs> that's, 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 as, that's as direct yeah. as it gets in COVID times. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Mm. So, See, right now, I'm looking at you. Okay, I'll right. look at you, Jeremiah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. I am not looking at the camera. Oh, what are you looking at? Yeah. Then? I'm looking below the camera. I mean, my screen is rather big. I have a big BenQ uh, screen. Oh, okay. You're, you're, you're big, but the camera is above your bubble. And right. if I look at Chris, yeah. then my eye yeah. changes. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a big angle. Significantly. I'm looking directly at <laughs> him. Mm. This is Emer. You, you can see? make this big or smaller. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> So I have a problem. Uh, I'm v fascinated by this rig. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm intrigued by Chris's idea. I mean, I'd lo love to see the photo. But I don't spend six hours a day on video calls. But yeah. I do spend, you know, maybe three hours or four a week on video calls mm. that are quite significant with studios and mm. writers and yeah. the rest of it. So it would be nice to be direct. Sure. And if, uh, yeah, I mean, if you, especially if you're pitching, I mean, you know, so, I mean, I don't do a mm. lot of sales these days have done in the past less so these days, but <clears> I do have a lot of, you know, senior and executive, you know, client stakeholders I need to work with and stuff like that. So, so that is a, that, that is a, a, a thing uh, for me. Uh, yeah, it, it it is interesting. I even saw, I even caught myself watching a beginner's guide to OBS video the other day because I thought it'd be nice to be able to live switch this view and and throw in some you know <laughs> throw in some animations you mean some, or some, some of slides. This? Or some. Some oh of this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, give us some of that OBS goodness, Chris. Go on. <laughs> it's like a little dance. We're it's doing. my favorite toy. It's my absolute favorite toy. <laughs> And have you got us on hardware buttons? It's just what uh, it's like. Yeah, bang, those are bang, buttons. Bang. Of course, they are. Yeah. Excellent. Speaking See, of buttons, have you seen the uh, Loop Deck um, podcasting module? Uh, um, podcasting module. How is that? Yeah, it's a very specific tool, I think, or software for the Loop Deck uh, that is um, specific to podcasting. Huh? That's interesting. I haven't heard of that one. Yeah. I don't think you need anyway, it, to be honest. I've heard, I've heard of the... <laughs> That's I mean, why I asked. I don't. Yeah. My, <laughs> well, Rode have one as well, don't they, which processes all the audio. They have the, the Rodecaster or something like that. Yeah, called, but that's a mixer, is. a recording mixer. That's uh, right. that, That's like and an overkill audio, for most situations. Yeah. yeah, I have you guys, so I'm... There we go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so I'm... I'm you know, uh, what do we think, right? And I'm interested in everybody's <laughs> views. Ema, let's go to let's go to Ema first. Um, Ema, what do you think about my idea of having a teleprompter? I think it's a really good idea. I thought that a teleprompter was like in the old fashioned sense that it was just the words, <laughs> oh. which I would think that you definitely don't need that because I think you're quite good at that. <laughs> yeah, I'm full um, of words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're, you're good at that stuff. So I don't think you need it, but I think that direct like I'm the same I'm I need to look down 
to see your faces, but then I'm not looking at the camera. But that's OK for me because I kind of prefer that <laughs> the indirect approach anyway. Um, is that, is that like, like when you talk to people that you never look in their eyes that you always kind of. Oh, no, I do. I do. Shyly look do. down. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm quite direct in real life, I would like to say. But um, yeah, it's just well, if I'm if I'm looking into the camera now, I'm not looking at you guys at all. So it just feels odd to me. So it feels good to it's us. more natural for me to look at your faces. You That's know. an interesting view because I I think I and I think I understand that because I've I've had that myself actually is that it would be nice to be able to look at people as uh, as well as being seen to be looking at them right so yeah that is yeah, part yeah, of yeah. my thinking yeah, yeah. Mm. so there is a disconnect because you I'm looking downwards my eyes are down but if I'm and I'm looking at you if I'm looking at the camera but in my head it's reversed. Like I need to kind of be looking at your faces to talk to you, so mm. because that's could, the way it would be in real life. Yeah, yeah. You could use you, know? you could use FaceTime, because Apple for a while now has been correcting your eyes automatically. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that's they've just they've freaky. introduced that a couple weird, of years ago, and and they got a real <laughs> uproar against it. People thought that was really yeah. really creepy. Weird. weird. They have silently introduced it. There is uh, this feature. If you go to your iPhone, to the um, FaceTime settings, there is a setting called eye contact. And what that does is oh, right. okay. you look at the screen, but mm. it fixes the video of, of your <laughs> eyes to seem to be looking at the camera. It is very subtle. It's not like jarring at so, all. Uh, you're is, really reading a book. <laughs> yeah, sort funny, of. Yes, you're thing. looking under the camera <laughs> in it, and it kind of slightly <laughs> lifts your gaze up digitally. And right. um, again, it's very subtle, but it adds that little bit of directness without you having to force yourself to look at the camera. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. A yeah, prediction yeah. for the future on the future of oh. photography vis a vis <laughs> teleprompters. Yeah. I think that someone will come up with a screen with a camera in the middle of the screen. Yeah, with oh, that will come. Yes. Yeah. Very, I think there's soon. there's um, already the first, um, I think the first uh, smartphone out there that has a camera under the screen, as in no notch, yeah. no punch, punch yeah. out, no nothing. <clears throat> it's unfortunately visible, so there's like a weird patch on the screen that yeah. doesn't look quite right, but uh, it's looking through mm. the pixels pretty much at you. Yeah, I think mm. that must be coming on a big, yeah. sooner or later. Screen. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, and I, I'd quite happily do that. I mean, if you have a decent sized monitor, sure. you know, just to have a little bit missing in the middle of the screen isn't going to cause you any bother or, yeah. or just it's well, not quite as nicely colored. Uh, I disagree with that. <laughs> well, it depends on what you're using you're it for. working on on a highly focused Photoshop. Oh, yes. OK. You know, I, you'd, you'd have to have a separate monitor. But what if you had a desk set up with two monitors, right? One was your 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 business and calls monitor and the other is your, 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 your artistic and creative monitor. Mm, just clutter. Uh, <laughs> I think, I think so, just sorry, invisible sorry, turn, camera turn and a, behind and a you, beautiful <laughs> monitor. <laughs> clutter. Like oh, yeah. a teleprompter. I and it up last week. <laughs> a teleprompter with a camera in the center of it so that it kind of, it's, oh, it's yeah. all things in one then. Yeah, it? well, that, so, so that's, that's the thing. So, mm. and, uh, okay. So Chris, you've been using one for, for, for some time, clearly. Months. Um, months uh, and uh have you uh, have you had any reaction from anybody of you what does it feel like to use yourself is it good oh, oh I, I like it because i like to i like to be able to look at people while i'm looking at my notes so it's mm -hmm. it's this it's this idea of like having a, a uh, augmented reality where you have your stuff in front of you while looking at people mm. um and it makes me look smarter pretty much because i can mm -hmm. i can look through my through my talking points and not get distracted too much while giving the other person the well but while looking at the other person at the same time so it's a yeah. it's okay. it's really good I, I like it a lot it again it's awkward to use um i've put it in our uh, tfop photo stream tfttf.com slash tfop photos um so you can get an idea it's not really an inconspicuous at all when you sit in front of that, front of that contraption um, and it takes styling in. But let's let's bring up the, you know, the for things like, that um, you shared because this is what a, what a teleprompter looks like. Sorry, Imer. 
for teachers and training um people who do training and webinars and stuff oh. like that um it's surely an essential part of kit going forward well do you know what um like, you can see how if i was teaching or trying to train people how it something like that would become incredibly useful as a oh yes. as a means to kind of connect with them oh yes just thinking of my own teenage son and homeschool and there's the way there's it works. there's some jobs out there in like tele mm. not, not telemedicine or tele support and that kind of mm. stuff video based um where these kind of things are a daily occurrence because of course the mm. connection if you are a customer who's getting support you want the supporting person to connect mm -hmm. with you and not just look look to the side all the time or are yeah so here's a, here's a question um i am complete novice on all things related to teleprompters so i i never thought i would need one i never really thought about them until this moment uh, <laughs> but now i'm being sucked in and, and uh, to it when i saw the, the this particular teleprompter which has a you know a, a, a big camera a tripod uh, that whole rig Some, something like this uh, yeah i mean i'm looking at that and that feels a little intimidating uh it just in terms of using it with an ipad and how one would make <laughs> the right connections can one get a teleprompter which is uh, lightweight uh simple that would effectively just go in front of your um, a video camera on your computer uh, with a very simple, um, uh, we can call it a stand or a, a you know a clip, uh, it being lightweight, and um, and just kind of put it up for the essential kinds of of um, meetings that you would need it in. Or is it just a, have to overbuild it for kind of typical speech giving? There are um, there are things like that. I've seen that, and it's it works a bit like a periscope. So um, they are kind of cheapish, and you they they need the webcam to be built into the top of your screen, and then you would hang yeah. that in front of the screen, and it would mirror that downwards, and then at you through a transparent mirror so you could put the skype window whatever you're using behind that mirror and then look into the camera so it goes through two mirrors pretty much those things i've seen them in action i've never had one but i've seen them in action and they are not super convincing because they are from like cheap pressed yeah. plastic and not so it's not like a great good. beam splitter which is what we are really talking I, about right yeah <laughs> you know, a high quality front surface, yes. semi um, transparent uh, mirror that that that's really the rig. Isn't a it? Adrian, how, how good are we at derailing your preparations here right now? <laughs> yeah. So do you know what? Actually, this is this is all good because I, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I, I've only uh, well, I've put I, I think you were showing just a minute ago on the screen, Chris. Yeah, the, there's a couple of products that I found yeah. through research uh, and they are of a kind. Right. So to learn about different types, I, I didn't know, for example, that there was something you could attach to a, you know, a, a, a webcam uh, or, or anything like that. So I, I, I'm still learning. But, it, you know, so it's all good. I think it's all good. Um, quite quite happy to, to chat. That not that what we do here? <laughs> 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 so um but let's let's have, let me let me just describe a little bit the sort of thing then and and for those who got video watching this on youtube you can can watch along but um the 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 way this would be set up the 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 product that i'm thinking of is uh it, it's essentially it, it's something that sits on the top of a tripod um, uh, and so for if, you know, and, you, and your camera it sort of sits between the head of your tripod and, and the camera sort of fits in it. So it's a metal mm. frame that sits on top of a tripod. Now, in my case, that would be a desktop tripod. So, and we're not talking about big things. Yeah, you know, we're talking about things which are, you know, they're, they're certainly smaller than a laptop monitor, the screens on them. So, yes, although there you might need some depth to your desk, perhaps. Because they they are they are deeper than your average you know camera camera on a small desktop tripod, um, but they're not big, uh, and mm. if you set them up and they're facing you, ideally they just look like another monitor screen, 
So for those that are used to having multiple monitor screens, that seems to me to be the effect that it'll get, albeit it'll have a bit more three-dimensional presence on the desk because it is deeper. Um, uh, so, you know, and they're, they're not the biggest monitor screens either. Um, you know, typically what you do is you buy a, a teleprompter product and it has the right kind of beam splitting glass in it and you mount your camera on it. Um, and uh, it has a little tray on the bottom at the front and you put uh, you put a monitor there. Um, it, a lot of them advertise as being able to be used with either uh, with either cell phones or, or with small tablets. Um, I, I have a slight issue with that because I have a blend of computers I have to work with. I can't really use uh, a, a tablet uh, as a as a monitor. So uh, the second thing on my shopping list is uh, a small monitor. And I'm talking here about maybe a seven inch monitor or a, or a 10 or 11 inch monitor or something like that. And I put a couple of links in uh, in the show notes. One is to a... Uh, uh, an on-camera type monitor so the sort of thing that you know the that camera operators would use or that cin cinematographers would use uh, to give them a better view of what their camera is capturing um, there are any number of of uh, you know very consumer oriented low pro low cost brands that that can provide these and that may sound dodgy but i've been thinking to myself well if i'm going to be looking at this through a beam splitter glass and it's only for seeing people's faces i don't necessarily yeah. need it to be you know the best quality monitor you know, ever this is this is the exact exact one that you chose there that i'm using for uh, for the like the switching the recording and so on so oh, is <laughs> i have that in use the lilliput uh, little it's not the 4k version it's the 1080p version which is plenty good so it's only 4K uh, in. So when it, that's a, that is a good point. All yeah. these lessons, they all say they're 4K monitors. No, they're, they're 1080p, yeah. They're, they're it's own, okay. it's they'll, decent. they'll accept a 4K signal. It's yeah. decent. It does the job. It, I'm, I'm not sure I would... Yeah, I, could, I could see it to be used in a teleprompter context, yeah. It's a bit small for that. Are these chargeable or, or no. are they all plug-ins? They plug in. But they need like 12 volts. Yeah, so you, you yeah. yes, so, I mean, mine is a desktop setup, Jeremiah. So I would definitely be buying a, a, a DC adapter to plug it in. Um, but many of them will accept uh, your sort of standard video camera batteries, like yeah, yeah, the the Sony yeah. FPs or whatever they're called. Um, but yeah, it depends. I mean, there's so many of them out there, uh, and all at a. Yeah, they seem to range between in the UK at least between about a hundred pounds and and two hundred pounds for these smallish monitors. When you get a bit more above that, you start getting into actually better quality equipment, things like Atomos Ninjas and stuff like that. But yeah. I was I wasn't proposing to buy something more you know, expensive. that good for this particular or yeah. expensive, yeah, for that for this particular. <laughs> I mean, what expensive. we use on film sets, those small monitors, like a director's <laughs> monitor. Sometimes I, I will have one to. Watch walk around as I'm working so I, I can be close to the uh, actors and yet I can see what the DP is is kind of generating mm -hmm. and make my adjustments but those <laughs> things are many 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 thousands uh, they're like uh, often 8k monitors uh, wow more often than not 4k monitors yeah. but they are highly um, <laughs> Sophisticated in terms yeah. of their gap. and they are and they are radio gamma. connected as well, right? <clears throat> and they're, they're wireless. Yeah. yeah. So so I'm I'm talking about here a little thing that will sit in the in the tray of the teleprompter. Um, yeah, it'll have an HDMI fun. cable sure. out of my laptop. The laptop will be treating it as a secondary display, mm. um, uh, and I can just push you know meeting windows up up there and and have it you know be visible. So that that's kind mm -hmm. of how it works. Um, so, so there's that. There is also another class of monitor actually that's that's quite readily available, um, which is uh, just simply something that people call portable monitors. And if you look at them, they look like you know um, they they look like thin tablets of one kind or another. But actually, they're not computers. They are they are simply monitors. Uh, but they're they're often marketed as you know a second monitor for somebody who travels with a laptop, for example, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And again, they'll work off HDMI. Some of them will work off USB-C if you get a, you know, a slightly um, more expensive one. And again, they're not they're not massively expensive. Um, the, the one I put here in the show notes is, is an 11.6 inch monitor. So it's a bit bigger, but you can get them sort of 10 inches and upwards to, to about 16 inches and they just look like tablets. Uh, again, that would sit nicely horizontally in the tray of a tele teleprompter. Uh, and you know it's uh it, it's all, all in all um you could get a kit like this and if you think about what you'd pay 
for a second monitor for a, you know just for a, a business desktop setup um you'd probably pay 300 pound dollar euros for a monitor maybe and that's the sort mm. of cost we're thinking about for this set it's the sort of cost you know that these this comes out at is, is roughly around 300 pounds here in the uk mm. what would you put on that monitor uh, pic- pictures of you jeremiah and, and and also pictures of chris and Ema and and all the you know a, a lot of what i use is is microsoft teams so when you open a video window and you've got and you've got a bunch of people to talk to or even even especially if there's only one person to talk to or two people to talk to you know you've got much more of a connection um that that application window would be moved to that second monitor and it would become the way that i conduct meetings which is a massive Mm. use case for me it's not for everybody but for me it's yeah it's a massive use case Mm. (laughs) anyway any any thoughts you know you're quite good at looking at the camera now because i've just been kind of observing you there for the last few minutes (laughs) and you seem to you seem to be in the habit of already trying to look at the camera he's trained himself i suppose I suppose in a work situation that you're maybe reading from reports or like you can't be as natural, maybe, you know, you, you've got obviously, you know, figures and facts and things that you need yeah. to maybe refer to when you're in the meetings. So is, is that where because you, from just from observing, you know, you seem very natural and you know, that you are kind of making a connection with the camera. Well, it's very nice of you to say so. Um, I It is a learned skill, um, le- learned primarily over the last six months or so, I guess. Mm. Um, you know, I didn't do a lot of the uh, video calls when in, in the first lockdown or so, but it, it, was only, uh, it was only slightly later on that I ended up working with people for whom video was the norm. Um, and so, yeah, it's, but it, it has been learned, you know, just simply by doing it all the time. Um, it, what I do miss, though, is that I, I miss the visual cue. So if I look down at you guys just now on my yeah. laptop screen, I, I get visual cues. I can tell when somebody wants to speak, you know, uh, and, mm. and it, you know, and when somebody's got something to say, when I can that give me a chance to take a breath and pause. If I'm looking at the lens, I don't get those, get, certainly yeah. the su- subtler vi- video, visual cues I, I miss. And so again, thinking about this in a, in a context of being perceived to be you know, professional, being perceived to be doing yeah. a good job, actually, I don't really want to be talking over people. I want to be able mm, to mm, react mm, in an honest way as mm. I would do if I was face to face with them. Mm, mm. Hmm. Yeah, it makes a lot mm. of sense. I'm sensing everybody thinks I should go and hit the buy button on this. Uh, I'd go for it, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, you have if, if depending on where you buy it, you might be able to just return it for for a few weeks. So you have time to play with it. Good point. Hmm? Good point. I've I've just experimented with reducing the um, you know our bubbles, which were spread across my entire screen, and making them all very small, and jamming them up towards the next camera. to the camera, right? Yeah, you know, so you know my, my first my first experience um, of a teleprompter like situation was when I recorded a video series like a training video series about Lightroom. So I was in front of the camera for like a few days, and but we edited this together, edited that together to like a six hour video class. And um, for the intro that we would put on the website, I had to like just say something, invite people, explain them a bit, what is this about, who I am, and so on. And this was a a chunk of text, maybe a minute long, which I could, I'm just crap at at doing these things by heart or learning these things by heart, so I have to read it. Um, And the guy who produced the video, he's like, yeah, sure, no problem. So he put the camera a bit further back on a telephoto lens, um, and then he just held up a laptop right next to the camera, which had that text on it. And I had a little mm-hmm. like, uh, like I, I was doing this as a remote screen, so I could scroll it with my mouse outside, out, outside of the camera. And it was mm-hmm. perfectly good because I was looking just slightly next to the screen. I mean, he was holding it right there next to the camera. So I was mm-hmm. looking right next to the camera, but it was perfectly fine because it was on a telephoto lens. So it was far away. So the angle doesn't play that much of a role. Um, so it wasn't a real teleprompter, but no one could tell. And I got reactions about this intro where people said, wow, that was 
you did this really well. And I was like, no, I was just cool. reading it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have tried Spoken that. like a good politician. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've seen I've seen people do that actually. Uh, sa- sadly, um, I, I don't have enough space, uh, so m- my desk is against a wall just because of the the space that I have. And so as I as I stand here right now, because my desk is in its standing configuration just yeah. now, I'm probably about a meter away from my camera. Um, so I don't really have you know, the opportunity to put it far enough away that the the angle between the laptop and the camera yeah. would be sufficiently small to make me look present. Um, although having said that, we were making a video today, uh, me and my daughter, Ellie, uh, we were making a green screen video today and she'd written a little script because it was, it was a school assignment <laughs> she was doing. Um, and so you know, we printed it out in a large font on a sheet of paper and I held the paper right close to the camera. <laughs> Punch, so that she could she, punch she a was hole actually, into she was the paper really and stick the camera the lens through that <laughs> hole and then it's it's perfect <laughs> if only somebody would sell paper like that that'd be awesome but <laughs> by the way there it is notebooks that are center punched right yeah, Thick that, notebooks so that would be great yeah no any so uh, great yeah idea. Well, do you know what i'm i'm i thought you guys do you know what? i don't know why but i thought you guys were we're, we're try and talk me out of this but actually it sounds like everybody oh, thinks it's it. a good idea so maybe you're I'll talking us into it i mean i'm you made I'm, a good case i'm all for the diy solution obviously that's what i am that's who i am but mm-hmm. um uh, in that vein i've seen i've recently seen someone who, who did the following he took a like a laptop video camera the ones that are built into the screen and you can buy those modules and you can hook them up to a usb cable because those are usb cameras pretty much so he had this little, it's a, a thin little strip of a board with a little camera on it. And then he hooked that up to a little, a, a little bendable arm. And he put this in front of his screen, right oh, okay. next that, to the, yeah. the that, right, right there. And it doesn't cover up a lot. So it does not really in the way yeah. you can look around it. Yeah, yeah. And this way he was looking at the camera while looking at the person because the camera that was where that clever. person was right next to it. Yeah. I bet you could but do that. It doesn't with work a with a bigger Pi camera, camera module, couldn't you? Ras- Raspberry Pi camera module. Oh I sure, you could do that. totally. I mean, the quality mm. is crap, but <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but that's that's another way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. All right. So we've talked for a long time about this, and we haven't even got to the topic about uh, <laughs> should I should I get a lav mic? So I think we may have to knock that one on the head, actually, because maybe we're that's run out of time that's an entire bit. other episode. The audio side of video. <laughs> maybe we can. We can dive into that, uh, yeah, separately. We'll do that. So, so then no, they would do that because I'm really pleased. Thank you all because this has been a really interesting conversation for me. Yeah, what does it mean for the future of photography? Well, <laughs> for a lot of us, right? Future, the future it's for the photography the is is looking at the camera, right? And and that's that's you know, if you think about the number of hours I'm putting in, I'm f- putting in far more hours doing that than I am actually out and about making images. So, so uh, you know, I will. Um, I think I'll give it a try then. Uh, go ahead and do it. Yeah. Yeah. Is can there a phrase? Can we can, can, can we coin a phrase like "work from home geek chic" or something like that? I don't know. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how about our picks of the week? Because um, I have two things to I add. I don't to. have one. I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. I have two. I have two, and <laughs> I, I can see yeah, yeah, yeah. Adrian also having at least two there. So cool. um, two, two picks of the week. The first one I announced already, it's that video of the guy who built that inverse teleprompter. And um, so he's, he's doing this in front of a laptop and you see the box that he built and uh, um, with the camera that he built out of a laptop camera. So um, by the way, the channel is called DIY Perks. Lots of interesting things and he explains how this works. And uh, nice. pretty, pretty much I did the same, but I... I put it upside down, so my camera is not looking from the bottom; it's looking from the top. But otherwise, cool. it's pretty much the same thing. It's a very, very. W- <laughs> once you use it, you don't want to be without it. Of course, when I work uh-huh. a- on my screen, I I just take it away. It just hangs in front of the screen, and I just uh, put it to the side if I don't need it. Uh-huh. That's really interesting. So yeah. yes, yeah. you can move it out of the way. Yeah. That is that is the first thing. The second thing is. 
um, an app for, unfortunately, it's just an iOS app. There's no Android version for it. And it's called a teleprompter for video. And the problem was I tried these things a phone-based teleprompter and there's like a million of apps and they are also not free they all cost money this one is not is no exception um i think there's i don't even know how much it was but uh probably around 10 bucks i'd say and what it does is it uses your front camera the selfie camera and then you can see here on the screen you can put the text that you want to read right next to that camera on the side mm -hmm. of the screen. So you are the same thing. Uh, you are pretty much looking at the camera because you're looking right next to it. And yeah. um, that's the closest you can get with decent quality for recording a script of sorts, an intro mm. to something. So that, for huh? me, <clears throat> is a pretty nifty tool. How do you move the text? You can you can huh? either have it on a timer, which, which mm -hmm. you set the speed and then it scrolls at the time. I think there's a way to remote mm -hmm. control it. And what you can also do is just uh, very gingerly use your finger on the screen and scroll it that way. You just have to make, uh, take care that you, get, that you don't get in front of the camera. But I think you can move it just up, up and down with your finger. So wow. that's my mm, picks okay. of the week. Um, how about uh, Jeremiah? My pick has nothing to do with... <laughs> the subject which is, it, it's uh, something i stumbled across uh and it is a site that Shorty. i love the name shorpy yeah Shorty. no idea why but th there are spectacular may, may contain nuts it, it says at the top <laughs> this is a uh, rabbit hole the likes of which uh one I could spend just decades exploring. These are all very high quality images, searchable uh, from the most conventional to the most obscure. Oh, that's uh, fab, and, isn't it? And they say, you know, you can get prints if you want. They're inexpensive. Um, but I mean, you're just looking at some landscapes, but there's billboards and posters oh, and wow. all manner <laughs> of things in extremely high quality. Um, it, it's just a lot of fun to explore. And, um, you know, I just, I don't know. I, I, I would encourage people to kind of oh, open love up that their, their yeah. visual stuff. And, of course, I'm not mm. sure what the licenses are, if they're Creative Commons or if, they, you know. Oh, you can buy prints. So someone's you selling something. You can buy something. prints. Yep. Yeah. But, I mean, in terms of reuse or appropriation, that kind mm. of thing. But um, uh, it's it's a great rabbit hole. <laughs> I like yeah. rabbit holes, especially nowadays, yeah. yeah. Um, Adrian. Oh, I, I've, uh, well, I, I have two, actually, that the have links. Uh, the first one I've actually already uh, mentioned, which is the, uh, or mentioned the use of, uh, which is that we've been making green screen videos here at home quite a lot recently. Um, uh, I, I've just put a link in to a generic uh, very affordable inexpensive green screen that you can get on amazon uh you know it's it, I, I have no affiliation with this product never used it the, the, there's tons of them you can get um but they are great um and uh it's it, it's just just fun uh, and my kids love it and it's a way do you know what it's it's a way to connect our family to my hobby is it and really that, as big as these photos suggest uh mine uh so mine is mine's probably at least two meters wide okay six and, by and nine it'll feet. drop it's big yeah i mean that that one is yes yeah, mm, that one says six decent. by nine that's feet decent. i think mine's bigger mm. than that actually um uh but uh, again it's just it's just a green sheet which is a, a, a loophole you know at the top of it so that you can thread a rod through it and attach yep. it to light stand so yeah it's it, it's a it's a great fun piece of kit and do you know what today i've even been teaching my nine-year-old daughter to edit in luma fusion and chroma key <laughs> out the background <laughs> and stuff like that and and mm. she's just loving it and we're having a good time doing that so there, there's a good family activity there for not much investment um, yeah. Second one uh, is the YouTube video that in part inspired Oops. this episode of the podcast. 
So um, I was already researching about this, which is how I found the video. So it wasn't quite the full inspiration, uh, but this is a link to a, a video uh, by, uh, well, the, the YouTube channel is called DSLR Video Shooter. Um, the, the guy who runs it, a chap called Caleb Pike, has been for, for quite some years now, has been putting out really, really good videos aimed at helping people you know just learn how to shoot video uh, often it's lighting sometimes it's youtube desk setup stuff like that you know it's it's um it, it's aimed very much at the enthusiasts although he is he himself is, is clearly a professional uh and uh you know he, it's uh yeah it's just a just an example uh, of a desk setup that uses a teleprompter and and for, for allowing it for exactly the same use case that i had for he's it. using so, quite uh, a few more things than a teleprompter <laughs> he ha that's yes. some light he and that's just it? one of several setups he has yeah. for his youtube channel in his studio that he runs as a business and stuff like that so i mean this is oh, very yeah. much a you know his is a yeah. professional setup he is a, a professional youtuber and a professional filmmaker mm. so yeah so uh, there's your just business justification for sure yeah yeah absolutely mm. yes mm. so there you go those are my picks of the week awesome so now we all know how to be professional on camera i like that <laughs> no i don't know that but i know the kit i know what kit to buy <laughs> by the way the one i found i found that thing i talked about earlier the cheap one that you can hang over your screen just to uh finish that off and it's not available oh, cool. anymore here's a link at bnh photo it looks kind of weird um, again, I've seen it, but I've never really used it, and it looked kind of cheapish. And I don't believe it's they make it anymore, and they call it the C I to I, C I to I, my contact so. device, yeah. whatever. Curious. Definitely one for the junk drawer. For I sure. I think I think it's probably <laughs> on that side. So anyway, with that, um, <laughs> yeah, we'll put all the links in the show notes. Everything. Uh, in there and um, that was it for this episode of the future of photography of course we are online at tfob now on the social media we have our discord which is really getting some action lately with <laughs> yeah it's just, great fun i'm hanging out there a lot not just rodent content but other things as well so um yeah i'm, I'm really enjoying that. other things and of course we are the squirrels i can live with the gerbils i can even live with the rats i have a big problem with. oh they're cute too so. anyway um let others know if you like the show and we'll be back in a week until then everyone bye-bye <laughs> Bye-bye.